SmartScope M5 EY3 is a handheld digital retinal camera that enables non-madriatic eye fundus examination and documentation of patient data through digital images and video. First, let's go through the basic use and settings of the device. Power on and off the device by pressing the left soft key. Attach the EY3 optics module by pressing it firmly into place until you hear a click. To detach the module, slide the release button. The retinal module can be used with an optional silicone eye cup to give additional stability and comfort to the patient, as well as acting as a light shield. Attach the silicone eye cup by pressing its base into the optics module. Imaging settings. Still or video capture mode is selected in the EY menu. To activate the menu, press and hold the right soft key. The icon on the top left corner of the screen indicates the selected mode. Illumination mode. The camera has three different illumination modes which can be changed in the EY menu. As a default setting, Infrared light is used for targeting the eye fundus and white light flash is used to capture a true color image. If preferred, the image can also be captured using infrared light only. This will produce a grayish color image. Also, a constant white light illumination can be selected, but madriatic drops need to be used. Illumination level. Illumination of the white light flash is adjusted by pressing the left and right arrow keys. There are altogether 10 brightness levels with a default value of 5. Suitable illumination for a person who has blue eyes is typically in the 3 to 5 range. For brown eyes, 6 to 8 is recommended and for very dark eyes, 8 to 10. The level of infrared light brightness is adjusted in the EY menu. Focus mode. The focus mode can be switched by short pressing the right soft key. The icon on the top right corner of the screen indicates the selection. M indicates manual focus and A autofocus. When manual focus is selected, you will need to adjust the diopter scale for the refractive error of the patient. By pressing the arrow keys up and down, you can change the focus of the camera. Each click is approximately equivalent to one diopter. If autofocus is used, there is no need to adjust the focus. However, the camera is slightly more sensitive to movement in the patient's eye and the stability of the user's hand. For this reason, it is slightly easier to start practicing with a manual focus. We will now look at some of the other menu options. Shoot mode. With autofocus, there are two shoot modes that you can select from the EY menu, normal and auto. With normal shoot mode, the shutter button operates like a standard digital camera with a step trigger. Pressing the button halfway first focuses the image and the image is taken when the button is pressed all the way down. With auto shoot mode, you only need to press the shutter button halfway down and the camera focuses and takes the image automatically. Mark side. After each image, it is possible to mark which eye was examined. Marking side feature is enabled from the EY menu. When enabled, the camera will prompt the user to verify left eye or right eye after the captured image. The side is marked to the file name and the image with the identifiers OS for left eye and OD for right eye. For video files, the side is always marked only to the file name. With SmartScope, it is possible to capture red-free images using the green channel. This is enabled in the EY menu. When activated, the camera will save two images for every picture taken a red-free image in addition to a standard color image. Next, we will go through the steps for achieving optimal image quality during a smart scope retinal examination. First, prepare the examination by making the room as dark as possible. 
The two key tricks in getting optimal image quality are proper technique and proper patient direction. To ensure the camera is stable for the image, it is recommended that both the patient and examiner are seated during the exam. The patient should be asked to sit still with their eyes as wide open as possible and focus on a target on the wall two to three meters behind the examiner so that the patient's eyes will target to infinity. It is also possible to use the camera for patients lying down. Turn on the infrared aiming light by short pressing the left soft key or pressing the shutter button halfway down. Hold the camera with one hand and support the optics module with the other hand, keeping the outer side of the left hand against the patient's forehead. Start approaching the eye from about a 10 centimeters distance. The camera should be positioned in a direct line to the center of the pupil. Keep the pupil in the center of the display and approach it until you can see the reflection from the retina, which will appear as grayish with the infrared light. If adjustment is needed to recenter on the pupil, it is recommended to adjust the module with a hand supporting the optics module. Only use very small movements as it is easy to lose the target. If the view is lost, just withdraw the camera a few centimeters and realign to the center of the pupil. Slowly get closer while keeping the view of the retina, the center of the display, and close in until it fully fills the viewing area. The optimal imaging distance is when the silicone eye cup is compressed approximately halfway down, which is about two centimeters from the eye surface. Capture image by pressing the shutter button. In order to ensure a good quality of examination, you should take multiple images. By trying different illumination and focus levels, you can find the optimal settings for each individual patient. If multiple patients are examined during one setting, create a new file folder for each patient by pressing and holding the middle key. If you want to preview images, go to the device menu and select preview images. Note that preview is intended only for a quick reference as the image quality is only thumbnail. Images are uploaded to a computer by placing the smart scope in its cradle. Image transfer works through a USB connection in a similar way to any other digital camera. Finally, let's go through some common mistakes with the help of some sample images. If you are seeing some white light on the top of the image, you will probably need to push the device slightly closer to the patient's eye. This will help prevent light from entering the silicone eye cup. Conversely, if you are seeing a white tail on the bottom of the image, smart scope is probably too close to the eye and you will need to withdraw it very slightly. Also, make sure the camera is not angled upwards or downwards, but is positioned directly perpendicular to the patient's pupil. This will prevent light from entering either side of the eye cup. If the image is very dark, increase the brightness level by using the right key. Conversely, if the image is too bright, decrease the brightness by using the left key to get the optimal contrast. If the image is not in focus, take a new image with a changed focus range in the focus mode. If you need support or have any additional questions or concerns regarding the usage of the device, please contact our customer service at service at Thank you.